Hello and welcome to KnowledgeBank.pro. Today I will talk about why Microsoft should double down on its investments into Power BI as a response to Salesforce acquisition of Slack. Well, what do we know about the acquisition so far? What we know is that the transaction is valued at approximately $28 billion. And we also know that about half of that will be paid out in cash. What makes this information interesting is that in um, what is it june of last year june 10th of last year salesforce announced that it acquires tableau and tableau acquisition was an all stock transaction valued at roughly 16 billion dollars i know that we are mainly a technical audience here on this channel so uh, stock versus cash transactions may not make a lot of sense to us but let's think about this when i buy something uh, worth of hundred dollars in stock what does that mean so if I think that my stock will dramatically appreciate in the next month or so, right? So if I anticipate my stock to go from 100 to $200 per share, does it make more sense for me to pay in dollars or does it make more sense for me to pay in stock? So obviously if I think that this transaction will be amazing, that there's some synergies with this transaction, then it makes a lot more sense for me to pay for it in cash because I know that a couple of months later, uh, the synergies will kick in, the stock price will go up, and therefore uh, I'm going to realize a lot more value from, from that acquisition. So why does Salesforce pay $16 billion for Tableau in stock, and why does it pay so much uh, for Slack uh, using cash? And the reason is that uh, Salesforce is a very strong application player, and it needed a couple of more technologies in its portfolio to have a much stronger offering. So applications plus BI makes complete sense. However, it's incomplete. So applications plus BI plus collaboration tools, that's what makes a much more complete package to the customers. So when Salesforce just acquired Tableau, it was still pretty risky because there was no assurances that uh, Salesforce would be able to acquire a collaboration tool in the future. Therefore, they went with uh, a stock transaction because there was a lot of risk involved for both parties. It was not clear whether that acquisition will have the synergies and the stock transactions made sense. Uh, with Slack, they're completing the, the trifecta of features that are really critical in, uh, in this offering, app, apps plus BI plus collaboration. Therefore, they know that this acquisition will impact their stock price positively. Therefore, they're gonna just pay for it in cash and realize the appreciation of stock in the future uh, for the shareholders. So the next question is, what does that mean for Salesforce to spend $27 billion to acquire a company like Slack? Well, let's take a look at Salesforce market capitalization. So let's look at this chart. So we see that current market capitalization of Salesforce is uh, roughly 225, $230 billion. So they just paid, let's say 10 to 15% of its market cap to acquire Slack. So how big of an investment is it? Well, let's take a look at Microsoft. Microsoft is a much bigger company. Uh, current market cap is about $1.6 trillion. So that's enormous. However, uh, what would be an acquisition comparable uh, to Salesforce acquisition of Slack? Well, let's take a look at SAP. SAP's current market cap is $140 million. Billion. So, um, Salesforce acquiring Slack in some way could be compared to Microsoft acquiring SAP. And if you understand the ERP space, Microsoft acquiring SAP would be enormous. It would be a complete game changer. It would be a huge event. Therefore, we can think, and it's a huge event both for the industry and it's also a huge event. It would have been a huge event for Microsoft because it's a big enough company that to integrate SAP into Microsoft would be a big change management. Uh, technology change, disruption. So it would be a big deal for Microsoft to buy SAP and integrate it into its portfolio. Therefore, we need to understand that um, SAP, uh, Salesforce buying Slack is also a huge deal. They're buying a company 10 to 15% of its size in terms of market cap. So it's a really, really big, important decision that sales ha Salesforce had to make by acquiring Slack. So I was talking about this trifecta of apps, BI and collaboration. And on paper, you could uh, compare Salesforce and uh, Microsoft and say, hey, they look uh, pretty much the same. Salesforce has apps, 
Microsoft has Dynamics products, Salesforce has Tableau, Microsoft has Power BI, Salesforce now has Slack, and Microsoft has Teams. And in fact, one could say that Salesforce leads Microsoft with respect to the apps, customers, and app um, offerings. Tableau and Power BI are probably on par. I'm a much bigger fan of Power BI. I would say it's at least 10, 15, 20% better than Tableau, but um, uh, they could be fairly com comparable in terms of features and uh, a lot of other factors. However, in terms of Teams, Microsoft advocates could say, look at these numbers. Microsoft reports 115 million daily active users in Teams in October, uh, where Slack only has, what is it, something that says 12 million or um, 15 million uh, active, or here you go, 12 million daily active users. So on the surface, it seems that Microsoft has uh, 10x advantage with respect to collaboration uh, over Slack. But uh, does this collaboration guarantee and will this provide Microsoft the advantage uh, as we consider this trifecta, the uh, the three component wedge? Um, I'm not so sure. Let's, uh, let's ponder on this. So I argue that Microsoft should be really, really, really nervous and worried about this acquisition for the following reasons. The wedge and the hammer, the sales hammer that Salesforce is going to be using to break open into the um, conversation with different customers, uh, that wedge, I would argue, is much heavier and the hammer is much bigger for Salesforce than it is for Microsoft. And these are my um, arguments. Number one, the most important thing in this whole conversation is how uh, integral part of the business process your offering is versus your competition. In other words, is uh, the other way to frame it is how hard would it be for me to switch from my technology to my competitor technology and still maintain uninterrupted business processes? Clearly, application would be on the hardest um, part of that conversation. So uh, it takes forever to sell an application like ERP. It takes years sometimes to implement an application. Uh, it's a multi-year journey. A lot of times it's a multi-billion dollar investment for a larger company. So switching over from one ARP to another is a big deal. And with respect to the application, um, Salesforce just has a larger variety of applications and they have bigger um, customers uh, when it comes to the app market. So uh, Microsoft Dynamics has a great set of uh, applications. But when you look at the customers who use those applications, they tend to be mid-market, smaller companies, with some notable exceptions, where Salesforce is pretty well represented across a variety of different tiers of customers. So um, you will be, it'll be hard for you to find some of the biggest customers in the world that are not using Salesforce from the application perspective. The other thing that we must consider is the Salesforce of the Salesforce, which is sales teams, the sellers of the Microsoft and Salesforce. Uh, you would compare Microsoft to CrossFit and Salesforce to powerlifting. So Microsoft salespeople look good. They know a bunch of things about, about a, a bunch of different technologies, but Salesforce sellers are really sharp and razor focused on one thing. They understand business processes intimately and they are very well equipped to have conversations with business stakeholders, where Microsoft arguably spends 80 to 90% of their conversations with IT departments. Microsoft is really well positioned, much better positioned than Salesforce to have a platform slash technology conversation with the customer. However, Salesforce is likely to run circles around Microsoft to have a business focus solution uh, and value based conversation with the customer and having the understanding of the processes where they need to come in and solve. Which means that for Salesforce, their application is the wedge so any customer that has Salesforce application is ripe to have conversations about collaboration and to have conversation about BI. So their existing footprint in application landscape for every customer will create sales cycles for Salesforce to introduce Tableau, Slack, and a bunch of other opportunities for Salesforce. Microsoft does not enjoy um, the same scenario. If there is one technology that Microsoft has that provides the sort of gravity that pulls through a bunch of different products, I would say it's Office. However, Office does not enjoy the same switching cost benefits that Salesforce enjoys with their apps. So what I'm trying to say is 90% of functionality 
that people use from office on a daily basis, uh, you could switch from pretty easily into other technologies. And some of the advanced features that we all love in Excel and other tools, they're not that uh, widely used. So the stickiness um, and the gravity that Office offers is just not comparable to that of Salesforce applications. The other problem is that Office suite of products is generic. It works for any industry in any line of business. So in and of itself, that product does not land having a business-centric solution-focused conversation with the customer. So why should Microsoft double down on its investments to Power BI? Number one is, as I said, Salesforce application is a hammer that's much bigger than that of Microsoft. Number two is, and I don't know this for sure, even though Microsoft does have 115 million users who use the product daily, I don't know how many of those users use it specifically for video conferencing and how, much, how many of those users use it for other types of collaboration. The problem is that if that percentage of users is high, video conferencing is very easy to switch from one technology to another. I cannot tell you how many customers uh, I talked to in January, they're in blue jeans, then in June they're on Teams, and then in December they're on Zoom or some, or, or, or some other tool. Right, so people, uh, people are switching their video conferencing uh, tools very easily. It does not uh, prevent them from uh, making any kind of other technologies decisions. So I, I argue that Teams in and of itself is not the hammer, will not give Microsoft the advantage to have business-centric conversations. That collaboration, as much as I enjoy it, is just not gonna convince the users to keep the conversation Microsoft-focused. So what does it leave us? Microsoft has a dynamic suite of products. Those are good products. However, they do not have enough customers, nor are they penetrated into the top tier customers, the largest customers, to serve as a big enough wedge and a hammer and to pull through the rest of the um, power, you know, BI and collaboration use cases. So what is the, the tool and uh, tri trifecta of tools that will provide that stickiness for the business and will provide that differentiation for business? Clearly it's only Power BI. And so the only way for Microsoft to have their suite of their trio to be comparable to business and value to Salesforce's trio is to have Power BI far significantly better than Tableau. In fact, it has to be so good and so user-friendly and so loved by the end user that information workers are going to be seriously considering that as an essential tool in their toolbox and that will create the gravity to then pull through the rest of the uh, apps and uh, collaboration use cases and have the conversation with the business. So in my mind, uh, Microsoft has to do the following. Team is already a good product um, and uh, it, it's enjoyed a lot of investment from Microsoft and uh, clearly it's one of the leading tools out there in terms of usage. So Microsoft just keeps doing what it's already doing with Teams. Applications, also Microsoft is doing and investing a lot. Applications have gotten so much better in the last several years. However, the problem with applications, it's a very long sell cycle. It takes a while to harvest the lead, to create those leads to then run the sales cycle, to close it and then implement it. So whatever Microsoft is doing with applications is great. However, it's a multi-year strategy and it'll take quite a bit of time before their application portfolio is comparable to that of the top application providers in the world. So that leaves us with Power BI. I think that Microsoft should double their investment in Power BI and get it to the point where um, it's 2x or 3x better than anything else in the, in the BI landscape. And frankly, Power BI team has demonstrated that they're able to innovate at a very high pace. We see monthly uh, releases from, from the team. Uh, they're significant releases. I think we just need more investment to make even bigger and uh, more monumental um, additions and improvements into the product so that we can get that product to be two to three times better than anything else in the market. And imagine this, let's say Power BI is two to three times better than anything else. What that would allow other companies to do is to use that product to offer niche solutions that may be underserved by standard applications, but they would leverage Power BI and Azure and focus on some niche solutions. And uh, that would create a lot of business value and gravity, again, to differentiate Microsoft solution versus that of uh, Salesforce and Oracle or IBM and other providers. In this. So hopefully I made my uh, case pretty well here. 
uh, acquisition of Slack by Salesforce is a major event. Microsoft should be really nervous and worried about this. They should not take this lightly. And if nothing else, they should double down on their investments in Power BI because I think that investment will give them the leg up on upcoming sales competition cycles with Salesforce in the future. Hope you enjoy this uh, opinion piece, a little bit different content for the channel. Thank you for stopping by and please come back soon for the next one. Bye.